What a weekend. Um, it's Easter weekend. I got some scores. I love doing the scores videos. I hope you guys like them. I know a few of you do. Um, my favorite score, my new BMX Bike Museum t-shirt. I got two of them. I'm wearing it all day. All day yesterday. It's Easter, so we did... Uh, last night we were drinking beers and painting eggs and a little hungover from that. Today, I, we were trying to get up at 9. Trying to get up at 8, took the dog to park my 9, so we could go do Easter stuff at 10. And by Easter stuff, I mean me and my adult siblings decided to hide eggs and hide eggs for each other to run around and relive our youth, apparently, because it's not as like kids. Um, and I was a little hungover from only three beers, but a lot of candy. And today, I ate a bunch more candy for breakfast. It was a little rough. I was really late. Um, because I thought maybe Sunday salvage sale wouldn't be going on, but it was. And I found this Bob trailer online. And I tried to go get it, but they sold it right before I left. And there's also this like this old nice high-end bike, which is like a panograph stem. 95 bucks, I tried to get it too. I messaged you guys both yesterday, but they both sold it today before I got there. It's a little sad. Because it's summer, I guess some of the people are out hunting too. This lady with the, the nice bike said that uh Someone messaged her over Vimo and prepaid for it and offered more than they were asking, and that was smart. I should have done something like that, because it's pretty hot, but I also don't have room or time for another bike. I got, like, all of these bikes in my friend's basement that I keep meaning to get to, and I've literally gotten, like, two out in the last, like, six months, and actually tuned up or sold and broke down the parts. But I did go to Sunday salvage sales, and it looked a little thin, but I feel like I scored really hard. I dug around, and everybody else was like, man, nothing. There's two or three nice old 80s road bikes there. With some parts of the other guys into vintage bikes, he just went up and bought them all. I always forgot to go look at the bikes right away. And one of them had a bent frame, but it had what looked like a small flange super record rear hub to like a 80s Open Pro. Um, and it had like a nine speed 105 long cage rear derailleur that looked like pretty mint, and then you know, a bunch of 80s 105 stuff. And the other one was the same way. It was a carbon fiber track with a bunch of stuff on, but probably should have bought, I probably would have bought that bike if I would have looked at it for two seconds before he did. Really got to start looking at the bikes. I really try to go hard. I'm really trying to find brand new brake pads in the package. You know, and a, a good free wheel is not that I'm trying to get the good rear derailleur first, but um, I found a few things. It was weird. Like most of the bins weren't there. The sales stuff was blah, blah, blah. This is the first thing I found from the handlebar bin. I looked at this during their tent sale and they wanted like 10 bucks for it. It's like, nah, because I knew they'd put it out at Sunday salvage sale prices. I did buy this one vintage salsa bar for five bucks at the tent sale and I put it on eBay, but it instantly sold. So it's a good deal. <laughs> Probably should have put it up for more, but this is a really nice old Sakai uh, SR custom Modelo anatomic bend and it's like clean. It's hard to tell on the camera because the light reflection, but it's like not a scuff on it. Um, so at Sunday Selfish Sale prices, I snapped it up. It's 410, another 410. I got a 410 a while ago. So 41 centimeters. Then there was like a junk bin on the floor. I don't know if it was donated, if it was straight up the recycling or something. I thought it was a free box at first. It was so gross. But I, I just put stuff in here and thought it was by the pound and they didn't seem, they didn't care. So. Whatever, we got one Mayfac Racer. It's got pretty nice chrome bolts and hardware. Most of it's all right. One more modern hardware. It's got the rear stuff. It's a little more modern -y one, a 451. Hmm, I don't know. One Mayfac Racer. I saw this real dirty old crank. I'm sure it says something dumb on it. I can't even read it. I thought it said Fuji or something, but uh, to, I, I cannot read it. Single speed, but it is a white 170, kind of scruffy, like factual track crank. The back's all machined off before it's painted. It's got an originate chainring on it, looks pretty good. So the 110, 130, like double BCD combo thing. It's 130 holes and 110 holes. And it's a 48 tooth, which is ridiculous. All this stuff comes with huge rings that no one can ride. Everything's a 48 or 46. Everyone wants a 42, bro. Hey, companies, everyone's a 42. And at first, I didn't even think I had the matching crank, but then I found it. Kind of looks like it says Shun. It's white, it's scruffy. 
don't know. It looks fine. I'll look at it real close. It looks fine. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll put them on something scruffy. I found this Sunrace long cage, all silver rear derailleur. I didn't even play with it, but it, the pulleys have no miles. It doesn't look bent. It just. You know, they were making these, They, I think they made, under some other names, they made the Sun XCD ones, I think, with slightly different finishes, but I know the Sun XCD ones, a lot of cheaper derailers wear out really fast, the pivots wear out. This looks pretty nice and clean, that's what I want. I like a long cage, silver, nine-speed rear derailleur. Sometimes I, I got like a bunch of silver cranks and old silver wheels, and like I don't want to put up modern ugly black derailleur on a bike. Like this is, I'm going to build... This RB2 for myself. This Beater RB2. I think I have some pictures of it. It's piled up over here somewhere. Um, I've been wanting to build forever and I got some like 2000s bright silver hub specialized wheels. The same the same wheels I just put on the little um, the little mixty. Another set of those with tires on them in my friend's storage. I should have grabbed those over there today for, for stuff. This thing feels... oh yeah. Like, this thing feels a little loosey-goosey, but it's a real tight spring. It just needs maybe a little, a little extra limit, limit screw tension. <laughs> That's a little goofy. Uh, um, but I have these bright silver wheels. I got bright silver generic cranks. I'll do a one by. I'll use this on the backs. Long cage, silver derailleur. And I'm gonna build myself this weird RB2 with all Sunday Silver Seal scrappy parts, and I'll be into this bike 50 bucks. I paid 20 bucks for the frame. It had a a front end damage and the fork is mangled. The paint's scary around the lugs. I think the frame flexed and cracked the paint popped open. I don't think there's a metal crack. I'm gonna ride it and find out. Find out pretty quick. <laughs> but I can't sell it. It's my size. That's, that's sketchy stuff, so I don't know. I was looking around. There wasn't much else except for in this garbage bin of dirty parts. One of these garbage EM shifters. This is a real Shimano one. Not like the crappy sun race or sun sunlight ones. It's a little better. It's a single. I think it's right. Um, so we can use it for a one by. Something cheapy, maybe. I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll use this. I think I'll probably use a trigger shifter or something nicer as a shifter. But I do have a uh, a sun race nine speed thummy I bought off eBay for like thirty bucks for a project sitting around. Maybe I'll use that. Miscellaneous parts items. Oh, so this is definitely from the REI sale, but it's an eight speed Alivio trigger shifter with the cable and it is either, it's probably brand new in the bag, man. So that's cool. Um, what else is in that bin? I was digging, there's one hub and it has clearly been messed with. This axle looks too long. How many threads are poking out of the axle on both sides? That's pretty long, just it, unless the dropout's crazy wide, whatever bike this came off of. The axle would poke all the way out and hit the quick release, and the bike would tighten down onto the quick release instead of onto the dropouts. So we'll see, I'll play with it. But it's a Dior XT Silver 750. I mean, I get 20, 30 bucks those all day long from those Rivendale kids. What else was in that bin? I think... Oh, I found this one thing. Um, I don't know if this is the old Velo Orange. It doesn't look like it's something. But it's just the single down tube cable stop that needs a barrel adjuster. I have a zillion barrel adjusters for these. I do one by stuff all the time. A single's totally cool. And it's like a weird silvery one. It kind of looks like the old Velo Orange ones, but it's not. In this bin there were a bunch of bmx -y parts, or maybe kids bike parts. I couldn't really tell. Luckily, old BMX Gary was there, so I called him over, and he dug through, and he was excited. He found like a complete 145 BMX crank set, and I found some fancy BMX crank bolts, and there's a couple of nice rings, a big BMX alloy ring. So he was stoked. He actually got some good, cool BMX stuff. Um, then I went digging around. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing. I found one junk bin and found these. Oh, that's funny. I didn't notice that. Oh, I still like them. Um... These are really old, sun-faded, all-black STM071. I don't actually know what that is. Uh, maybe these are Exarge or something. I thought the yours are the MT60. 
MT and MT 730s or XT. So these are like my favorite brake levers. They're the Shimano, you know, mountain like two finger or three finger lever. They clearly had the big shift pod on and yeah, someone hacksawed it off and filed it down. I will often get these and use just this right one and the shifter and then try and find a mixed matched left one that doesn't have the shifter because I don't want to hack it off and file it down, make it look ugly. But I mean, really, this clamp pretty good, a little sharper, you'd never know. But these are kind of cool. They're real sun fady and scruffy. It'll be cool on a weird bike. I love it. They have a great leverage pull. They're really good for can levers. They're really stoppy. Um, I dug around in the junk bin and found one cool old metal cap. I really wish I could have found two, but I found the ones to start a Brooks saddle wrench, except it doesn't say Brooks, so it's some sort of generic Brooks style saddle wrench. I found uh, a little pumpy dude. I have no idea if it's actually for bikes or if it's for cars or something. A little quick release. Oh, you know, it looks like it's got, it's like a Presta valve or a Schrader valve, Presta. It looks like it's a Presta valve only. So maybe it's for bikes, I'll play with it if it works. I found one little bag with two flat shift plates, like vintage Sun Tour or really modern Diacomp style. And two little flat bar, bar end plugs, all brand new in a bag. And that's totally cool. I always need the little flat bar plugs. You always find the, the drop bar plugs. I also got this random bin of what looks like a zillion O-rings. I think this is for like lights and computers and stuff. So it's a bunch of different stretchy, yeah, here's like a Garmin mount or something. So there's a bunch of different stretchy O-rings, and a lot of mounts like this have uh, just hooks on them, so you can wrap around your tubes. My fingers are a seat tube. Come on, get on there, bro. 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 <laughs> what a jerk. Pretend like my fingers are a seat tube. We can wrap around and hook onto stuff. Um, it seems like sometimes you get lights and things. It's the only thing you're missing are these, or weird fenders have a thing like this and there's just a million of them in here in all different shapes and sizes and lengths and I don't care about any of these Garmin parts but why not have 500 weird stretchy o-rings <laughs> why not I probably needed two of these ever in my entire life but I got a bag of uh, just light brackets or maybe like a little box of just light brackets and parts I will save this for that then, uh, the tall guy's into old road bikes. There's a hidden box up high with wheels piled on top of it, and you reached in there and pulled out a stem. He's like, oh, that's just a stem box. He looked at it, and he was like, whatever. I don't remember if he got it. But he didn't go through that box very good, because I got up and stood up on the ledge and looked, and I went through that box. People were trying to talk at me. My dog was barking, and I scored. So I was like, pulled out this weird profile stem. It is very light. I don't know if it's tie light or it's stainless or if it's... A really nice chromo and um, just like nickel plated. 22-2. Profile. So it says profile on both sides. It really says rofile on this side. It's got like a weird cutout. It's got like a little shim in there. Probably so you can't over tighten your bar. This bolt's all rusty and ugly so I'll have to replace it. But who cares about that. But it's cool. It's light. It's a long road stem. I'm going to do a couple builds with some metal road stems, so I don't have quite what I want. Maybe it's what I want. And I dug, and there's this guy, which is the old SR Royal. It's got the old school SR logo, so it's like a real ripoff of the 70s Chinelli stuff. It does not look very scruffy. It doesn't look too long. So the SR Royals have like a weird smaller bolts. They're a little lighter and nicer. It still has a big steel wedge of aluminum. But it's 22 2 Japan, max height. This is a nice stem, man. And I pulled this guy out, and what is it? It is a short little Nitto, little short king. 22 2 short, silver, not super scruffy, a little dirty. It actually says Nitto on both sides. A lot of these will say Nitto Young down here, not on them. So this is great. I got a little Nitto fixie bar from, um, from a bike farm last time. Maybe it'll be perfect on this stem. Put on some little fixie. It'll be extra hot. Nitto, nitto. And this is what I'm really happy about. Richie Force. It's pretty long. Maybe we go on a bike with kind of a short top tube. 26 0. I could have done without that. And it's the road length. This probably came on a Bridgestone or something cool. But it's made by Nitto. Uh, I really wish it was 25 4. Got the good Nitto like aluminum wedge and aluminum top, but yeah, all silver, shiny, 
nickel plated Richie Force Nitto. I mean, this is hot. I got like a the positive rise one, which I think is 25.4 in black at Bike Farm like two trips ago. I'm not going to Bike Farm today because I was in a rush and I wanted to go get to the the uh, my Sunday hangout festivities where we looked for Easter eggs in the yard and ate too much chocolate and ordered bad gluten-free pizzas. But I didn't pay for them. Um, I found this box. I guess I should show you. So I was looking around the tools. I should have looked harder. They clearly put some new stuff out. Box. Cyclists. 36 millimeter BB right fix cup install remove tool. $15. Now I already have one of these tools in my campy tool kit, my Cobra tool kit. But these things are wonderful. So this is a rip off of the campy one. So you see it's got the two lips for like the 36 mil fix cups. So you don't normally put like the, the weird big spanner wrench with just like the two flats. Um, and you put that on and then this thing's kind of rip off of the EBT thing. This screws in from the other side. So it can, it's got like a little bevel. So it's going to fit tight in that cup. So this holds the cup tight into the frame. Um, or this, it holds the tool tight against that cup that's in the frame. And then you can really uh, righty tighty lefty loosey. I have no idea what this tool costs. It is worth its weight in gold. If you've ever fought these cups, have hammered and pounded and not been able to get them. You can get this with two cheater bars on both sides and uh, really mangle it. This will get those cups out worth their weight in gold. I was absolutely dying for a while before I got my, uh, my big tool kit. I'd, I'd clamp these down with washers and leave the spindle in there and bolt a bunch of stuff on and put a big giant wrench on there and pound on it with a sledgehammer to get really tight bottom brackets out and you can. But this thing was amazing. The guy said, hey, where'd you get that? It was just sitting over here with the tools. He's like, we sent that back to the shop. We're going to use that at the shop. But I guess they sent it back here. And I was like, guess so, bro. He's like, whatever. I guess you can just have it. 15 bucks. Ooh, there's a fun little... There's a fun little instruction booklet with all their other tools in it. I'm going to sneeze. Work repair stands and bottom bracket tools. I will say this this cyclist tool right here for the frame alignment gauge tool. Do not get it. Get the park one. This thing's going to be made out of solid square tubular steel with the park one's a C-channel of aluminum. This thing was so heavy and unruly. I hated using it. My old business partner had one of those. Every time I grabbed it on accident, I was like, I hate it. But it also just showed the cyclist uh, seat tube reamer for 27.2. It was so cheap. Everyone else's reamer was like $300. The cyclist one was like $50 for the handle and $30 for the blade. And I loved it. It cut amazing. The blade did dull eventually. And uh, I ordered a new blade for $30. Bucks. It just bolted on. You can have the old one sharpened for $30. Bucks. I, I really liked it. I miss it. I've been looking for one. Can't find it. But mostly cyclists. Oh, yeah. Here it is. 27.2 seat tube reamer. Mostly the cyclist tools I've used are insanely inexpensive compared to Parker or anybody else, and they work great. Um, so, you know, if you come across this stuff, don't be too worried about it being cheap or weird. So, this was a pretty good score 15 bucks. I asked like three other guys if they wanted it. Like, I have one of these, but I can't part without it. No one cared. I found a bin of seat posts way over by the bikes. Um, and I looked through, and there's nothing super great, but I did grab this. It's an Essler LaProd. It's got the gray head and the gray flutes, and they're in really good shape, and it's not scruffy at all, and it's 26.8, which is the common Japanese decent bike size. And it's in good shape. I had to get it. It's got some weird tape on it. I had a couple of scruffier ones, and I was like, no, these Essler LaProds aren't really that easy to sell. They were a nice common size. They came on all the tracks, and... A bunch of stuff, um, but no one really cares. They're not super sexy. Then this is some mail my sister brought me from our parents' house. Hat and dog thing. Oh, I got my hardball eggs in here from the from the the painted egg thing. Here's a creepy one my sister did. <laughs> Here's a fun firecracker one I did. Here's a nice middle finger one I did. <laughs> got a couple bits of chocolate in here, but I also got some stuff out of the free box. Not a lot. Oh, 
one piece of banana Laffy Taffy left. I didn't realize. I'm very excited about that. Here's the two things I got out of the free box. Check this out. Classic Schwinn. It's a modern cheesy, but it's still like a, on metal. Um, like aluminum uh, head tube badge with the, the sticky back. I mean, that's fun. That's fun. And, you know, set of junk tire levers because I just can never find tire levers. I need all the junk tire levers I can get. So not a big score. I think I paid $33 for everything. Um, 15 bucks plus 2 bucks a pound, so... What is it? What is that? Another six dollars? Three pounds? That can't be. That can't be right. Thirty bucks, fifteen dollars, two bucks a pound. Yeah, that's like seven seven pounds. That makes more sense. Those cranks got away at least a pound or two. So it's a pretty light score. I did not get my Bob trailer. I did talk to one of the other guys who has um, the other bike shop whose name I can never remember over on Forty Sixth and Division. Um, tip of my tongue. Always on the tip of my tongue. He's a cool dude. He used to work at the CCC and literally wrote books on restoring vintage Schwins and stuff. Um, he said he thinks he has several of those Bob trailers in his backyard. His girlfriend, I think, hoarded three or four of them. For a while, his backyard had like seven, eight hundred bikes, and I was totally hidden from the street. And he just bought bikes and slowly fixed them up and sell them at the shop. But he made a real push to get, go through and get rid of all of them. I did a video a while ago. I went to his house and I bought five old road bikes for like 150 bucks <laughs> in various states of decay or disrepair. Bought all the Shimano 600 bikes he had, you know, anything anything cool. Um, he said he might have one, so I might go hit him up. Because I kind of want one of those weird Bob trailers. I hear they ride different. I'm hoping that won't make my bike ride terrible because I would like to be able to take my dog bike camping. You know, she's 14 pounds. I could put some more gear back there. I do have detachable low riders in the front of my rando bike. I could put big front bags on and a handlebar bag. If I could get her to ride in the handlebar bag, I would. <laughs> that wouldn't do a trailer, but she will not get in that bag. She's too big now. Um, so eventually, I'm going to find one of those Bob trailers. Try it out. We'll see. But that is my little scores. I am so sick from eating way too much sugar, and I'm still going to eat this banana. Laffy Taffy. So thanks for watching. Oh, I should say I've been putting a bunch of stuff up on eBay. I haven't done anything on eBay for weeks. I'm trying to go through these last few weeks of scores and swap meet scores and the tent sale scores. Now the Sunday salvage sale scores again. Putting stuff up. I've been selling stuff. Put 20 or 30 things up and I sold 10 of them already like overnight. So stuff, stuff's moving, man. Um, so, you know, check me if you want. So thanks for watching. Mm. Papa, Papa! Addendum! 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 Um, so I often go to the Goodwill bins too, but I rarely show that stuff off because it's a bike channel and it's mostly not bike stuff, even though I go there looking for bike stuff and it's sweet to find bike stuff. Um, but today I did find some bike stuff. I Yesterday I took my little rando bike on a short ride to convince myself that I had to get switched to cruiser bars and that I had to switch to a smaller front chain ring. And the bike felt amazing instead of horrible and I really enjoyed it. So today I had to talk myself into taking a longer ride. I keep realizing that the Goodwill bins are like right off the Springwater Corridor. I keep seeing some other exits around this neighborhood. And so I like got out a map and looked at it. It was all frustrating and stupid so I found an old bike map and got it out and it was amazing. And so I did. I rode, you know, cut across my neighborhood like I do, and bombed this little hill and found the Springwater Corridor. And I haven't ridden it in years because Portland's got a serious homeless problem and drug problem and crazy people problem and liberal problem. Allowing all this stuff to do as if it's compassionate to allow people to suffer and die on the streets in front of you. Um, which I do not believe it is. So, but it looked pretty clean the last few times I've driven by it. And so I decided to go ride it, and yeah, it's just some people out, normal people, ride bikes, families, people taking walks. No sketchiness. Um, so at least this part of the path in my neighborhood is uh, pretty nice, because I've definitely heard a lot of horror stories from friends about being tackled off their bikes, having people throw needles at them, you know, having to bob and weave around a tent in the middle of the thing, piles of needles everywhere, people waving guns at people. People, my friends with their kids riding on the bike path with 
a wing nut. We're able to gun at them at least once a week with our commute to like three, four times a week. Um, so not awesome, so I've avoided them for five, five years, maybe more, maybe six or seven. I mean, everyone says it's COVID that these problems started, and that's a complete total lie. I stopped riding the paths in like 2018. I mean, it, and things were bad for a few years before that, but they were, they were like unpassable bad by 2018. Um, but I decided to ride it, and I'm glad I did. It was a lot closer and more fun. The spring water was pretty. I stopped and took a picture. It's like on one little river spot. It's not even the prettiest river spot. It's just the least crowded one. I decided to stop. Um, but I went down with just my little rando bag, so I didn't get too much stuff at the old bins. I started walking around. The first thing I saw was this bar tape. Brand new in the bag. Something kind of chewed on the bag. Bar tape looks fine. Black and white. Sort of speckly cork. Totally fun. White camo. You know, bins is $2 a pound. I think I ended up paying uh, $8 for all of this stuff. So I found this. I found a couple of empty Soma bar tape boxes. I never saw the bar tape. Uh, I was going to check the CDs. I'm obsessed. I got a cheesy 90s the Mavericks CD. Um, I had a friend who used to have a Mavericks album we play sometimes. We were all hanging out and drinking with his family. He was in a band, like a weird family rockabilly, Partridge style, Partridge family kind of style band. Um, and I loved it. I found a few of their albums on tape and did not like them, but this one looks fun. You know, CDs are a buck. I got it. I don't know if you guys know, but I'm obsessed with CDs. I can't stand digital music. I don't want songs auto-playing. I don't want some algorithm telling me what song from what band I don't like and don't care about I should be listening to after something I like. Even like, I like, I like a lot of really bad old um, late 70s, early 80s through the mid 90s punk rock bands. It's my favorite stuff. I mean, I like a lot of 50s roots rock and rockabilly stuff and um, doo wop and 60s girl groups. I, like, I mean, I have a big musical taste. I got really into a lot of country for about a decade. So, you know, when I'm in a mood, I'm in a mood. But I like old punk stuff. And anytime you put any old punk song on any playlist, on anything ever, Within three songs, it devolves into bad MTV punk, and then it'll play every single album by every bad MTV punk. It's just back to back to back to back to back. Like, oh, you like something rare and cool and actually good? Here's some bad corporate stuff. Like, F you, you can't listen to something good. All I want to listen to is Motorhead. Cool. Here's, like, modern, bad 2000s, you know, bro singing through your nose, metronome metal that sounds just like New Country and everything else. So, um... So I hate that. So I like CDs. I have hundreds of them. I have way too many. I used to collect records, but I sold them all. I started my first shop. So I was poor, and I had to sell a backpack every month to make rent. Keep that shop open. We made no money in the first two years. And records are heavy and hard to move, and blah, blah, blah. And I used to hate CDs, but now I'm into them. Because they're cheap, and no one else cares. But, um, rant over, I also found this rack towards the end I was walking. It's aluminum. I think it's Originate or something. I've seen this before. Or some factory things aluminum. It weighs maybe two pounds, maybe. It looks like it mounts to uh, mid fork eyelets, and then at the crown, it's got all the hardware. It's super light. You can get little low riders on. I don't know. It was great for cheap. I was excited. I found a whole bunch of brand new doorman hats. I don't know what doorman is. It's something. Um, brand new, black. I kind of buy a lot of hats because I hate most of them. So I'm gonna try and see if it's good. Um, I figure I'll put a patch over it. I think Stowe Wheels gave me a cool patch. Maybe I'll put that on it. This is the first thing I found. A really gross, really stained uh, book bag with a silk screen, a nice silk screen of To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, which is a great book and what I named Scout after. This Scout in this book. From Barnes & Nobles. I'll give it a wash. Maybe I'll cut it off and sew it punk rock style on the back of a hoodie or something, some dumb shirt or something. Who knows? Who knows? I found one pair of Carhartt shorts that look pretty decent in my size. They're really kind of a lightweight. Not really stretchy, but whatever. Oh, I found they had a whole bunch of brand new Dorman shirts next to the new Dorman hats. So I guess Dorman went out of business or something. And I found one of my size, and it's brand new, and it's my size, and it's got some sick pistons on it. So, you know, I can wear this while working on my old truck. And then I found a ton of bubble wrap, these like giant long pieces of bubble wrap. I usually grab all the empty small boxes and packing material I can find, so I don't charge you for packing material or small boxes, and I do all my eBay in. Um, I got like 15 of these, and I've already used all of them but two today, just doing eBay. So, But I had this ridiculously 
stacked up. Oh, it's in the picture. Here's the picture again. Here's a close-up of the picture again. Um, all stacked up on my little rando bag and this upside down. It kept me from going crazy on my little rando bag, but, you know, I'll probably ride my nothing special Schwinn with the big basket most of the time now. It's so close. I think it's just as fast to ride your bike because, like, the bike path's like a straight shot if you drive, if you do some weird squiggles and wiggles. They did have, like, three brand new mint condition aluminum walkers. My stepdad's got Parkinson's in the 70s. He broke a hip. He has to use a walker now. And my mom only found a used hot pink one, and he's really not into it. If I would have my car, I would have bought one of those walkers. They did have a, a Cannondale, like an 80s Cannondale, the RX100 Group, the one one fifty four. They drop the price every couple of days, so if it's still there in four or five days, it's down to 40 or 50 bucks, I'll probably buy it. But uh, I ain't paying a 150 for some old 80s Cannondale that needs a bunch of work and doesn't even have the 105 group on it. But anyways, that's my addendum. And it's mostly bike stuff, and it's totally cool, so thanks for watching.